What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a vintage aged photo effect in Photoshop. We post new content every week, so make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media using the links in the description. Also check out newlayer.com and sign up for the email list to get special offers that are only available for email subscribers. Let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is create a new document. So I'm going to click File, New. And I'll set the width to 1920 and the height to 2880. And hit Create. So I chose that size because it's a 3 to 2 ratio, which is pretty typical of photographs. But I also wanted it to be 1920 pixels wide. So 2880 just happened to be the proper height. Next I'm going to come down to my files. And if you're a new layer member, you can download the texture and photo that we're using, plus the finished PSD template in the project files at newlayer.com. Check out the link in the description to learn more. So I'm going to come into my textures folder and drag that in. And then I'll resize it a bit so it's covering my entire canvas. And hit enter to place it. So if I zoom all the way in, you can see that this is a really detailed texture. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of blur to this to get rid of some of the digital looking detail and that'll help add authenticity to the final look. So I'm going to come up and click Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set the radius to 0.5 pixels. This is a little dark to be a photograph, so I'm going to come over and add a Levels Adjustment layer, and I'm going to move the right slider to the left a bit, and that's just going to brighten up the entire background, as well as adding some contrast, and I want it even a little bit brighter, so I'm going to take the middle slider and also drag that one to the left to about 1.5 or so. So you can see that that brightens up our background a bit. Now we'll go back into my files and I'm going to drag in the photograph. And I'll resize that so it's about centered in the canvas. And hit enter. Next I'm going to double click that layer in the layers panel to bring up the layer style dialog. And we'll come down to the blend if section and use the sliders in the underlying layer area. So what this does is it blends our picture with the layers beneath it. So I'm going to drag this left slider to the right. And you can see as I drag that the darker parts of the background start showing through. So I'm going to stop about there. And then I'm going to hold Alt and click the left side of that slider and it will separate it. And I can drag that left part of the slider back over to the left. And that's just going to feather our effect a little bit to make it look more realistic. I'm going to do the same thing with the right slider. So once I see the image start to fade away, I'm going to stop and alt click on the right side to separate it and drag that all the way back over to the right. And I'll hit OK. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the texture is now fading through our image. Next, I'm going to come up and choose Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and set the radius to 3 pixels and hit OK. And I want this blur to only apply to the edges and not the center. So I'm going to come down and click the layer mask of the smart filters and press B to select my brush tool. And using a soft black brush, I'm going to paint just in the middle of my layer mask. I'll press left bracket to shrink that a little bit. And I'm going to paint basically from the top of his head down to about his knees. So if you look in the layers panel, you can see the layer mask. Next, I'm going to add a Vibrance Adjustment layer and take the saturation down a bit to about negative 35. Then I'll come down and add a Curves Adjustment layer. And I'm going to give this a slight S-curve. So first, I'm going to click on these points here. And that'll keep the middle section of my line straight. And what I'm going to do is edit the top right and the bottom left points. So for the bottom left, I'm going to bring it up. Somewhere around 45 is good. And what that does is it's going to fade some of the blacks so they're more of a gray color. Then I'll come to the top right point and drag that down. And again, that will fade some of the whites so they're not quite as bright and they're more faded out. Now I'll come down and add a gradient map adjustment layer. And I'll come up to my gradients and I'll click the gear icon. And what I'm going to do is come down and select photographic toning and hit OK, and that will replace any of your gradients in here with the photographic toning set from Photoshop. And the one that we're going to use is this one right here called Sepia Highlights 1. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to come down and set the opacity for my gradient map to 65%. Lastly, I'm going to create one more curves adjustment layer and drag that down. And again, I'll press B to select my brush tool, use the right bracket key to resize that, 
and I'm gonna paint everywhere in my image with a soft black brush except the corners. That way the curves adjustment layer applies only to the corners creating a vignette. So if I turn that off and on, you can see that it darkens just the corners. Lastly, I'm gonna come down back to my image layer and I'm gonna set the opacity to about 75% and that's just gonna fade it out a little bit more. So if I duplicate my image layer, and press Control shift right bracket to move it to the top of my layer stack. I'm gonna delete the smart filters. I'll right click that and come down and choose clear layer styles. And then it shows just our original image. So I just wanted to do this so I could show you the before and the after. Since everything is using smart objects, you can easily double click and replace your image with any other image that you have and all the effects that we created will automatically reapply. That's it for now guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. We create content based on your feedback, so let me know what you want to learn next in the comments. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.